Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Hunter and welcome to a brand new SvelteKit video. In this video, we're gonna be learning how to use route parameters in SvelteKit. And to better understand what route parameters are, let's start by looking at a quick example here. So let's say that I wanna access Elon Musk's Twitter, right? So I'd go to twitter.com slash Elon Musk. And then let's say that I also wanna access Jeff Bezos' Twitter. So I go to twitter.com slash Jeff Bezos. As you can see, the structure of these pages is exactly the same, right? They have the profile picture, the bio or whatever about me, whatever this is called. The only thing that changes between these pages is the content itself. So this content is Jeff Bezos' content, obviously. And this is Elon Musk's. So, you know, without having to create a unique page for every single user that Twitter has, they use something called route parameters, right? So essentially in the URL, we're typing in, you know, twitter.com slash username, right? Then Twitter is able to go and use that username when we go to the page. It's able to go and fetch the data for that specific user and then load it on the page, right? And that's what a route parameter is essentially. It's essentially a variable that can be set by a route or a URL that when the page loads, your application can use that variable within an action of some sort, such as making a database call or hitting a specific external API to fetch that specific content. So route parameters can also be nested. If we look at one of these tweets here and we click on it, you can see that we all we not only have the username here, we also have an ID, which is unique, right? The ID of this specific tweet. So that's how it knows to go and get this specific tweet, right? And tracks the comments of this tweet as well. So now that you have a basic understanding of what route parameters are, let's look at how we can actually implement them in SvelteKit. And to do so, we're going to be extending this demo application here that we built in the previous video, uh, loading data in SvelteKit. So if you're interested in how we got to this point, I'll have a link in the video description for that, but I'll quickly go over it just so you have an understanding. So all we have is a very simple application um, with a shop page. We have some products listed here, and then we're getting all this product data from the dummy JSON API, which is free to use, anybody can use it, and we're just getting some products, right? And our goal here is to make the title of each of these products clickable or a link. And then when you click on that link, it'll take you to a page dedicated to that specific product where it can have the title, it can have images if we wanted to, it can have the description, it can have the price. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and implement this. To start, we're gonna to need to go into our shop directory and we're gonna create a new directory inside of the shop. And this one is gonna be named open bracket product ID close bracket. Now this name can be whatever you'd like it to be named. This is gonna be how you're gonna access that route parameter inside of your application. I like to be as descriptive as possible so that you know I could just put ID here, but then if I have multiple IDs for various things such as customers or products or comments, it can start to get a little bit confusing. So I just like to name them um, as descriptive as I can be. And it must be surrounded in the open and closed brackets because that's how SvelteKit identifies it as a route parameter. So then inside of this file, inside of this directory, we can create two new files. We can create a plus page.js and a plus page.svelte. Now for the plus page.svelte, we're just gonna create a basic template here. We're gonna fill in the data later with actual content, but we'll just set um, product title. We'll say product description and then product price. So now we navigate to any page inside of our application here. So shop slash one, for example, you're gonna see that we get this template page that we built, right? We can also go to 50 or we can say, hello. It doesn't really matter. This value here gets passed in and then we handle that on the back end. So we can go to shop slash one. And then inside of our page.js, we're gonna export a load function. And if you're unfamiliar with load functions, again, I have a video dedicated to load, loading data in SvelteKit. So please go and check that out if you're not, not aware or you're kind of lost right now. Um, but this load function is going to take in two parameters. It's going to take in fetch as well as params. Fetch is going to be used to fetch the data for our specific product. And params is how we're actually going to pass in the product ID. It's how we're going to access this route parameter here that we set, the product ID. So we can console log params here and just see what this looks like. So we can click, we can just hit save, and you can see that we have the product ID here in the console inside of an object. So it's basically an object with whatever the whatever we specified as the name of this directory here inside of those brackets as the property, and then the value that we passed in the browser is now the value for that property. So we could just type in hello, for example, and, and hit enter, and now you can see that the product ID is hello. So let's go back to one. Now what we wanna do is we wanna make a fetch request to this products API endpoint here, and we wanna be able to use this endpoint here where we can get a single product. And as you can see, it's gonna give us this data here, the, the title, the description, price, so on and so forth. We have this URL copied, so now we can actually create a function inside of our load function. We'll call this fetch product. 
to be an async function. It's going to take in a parameter of an ID, right? And then we're going to const res equals await fetch. And we're going to use template literals here so that we can actually just pass in whatever ID is passed to this function. We can pass it in this URL and get that, that content. And then we can say const data equals await res.json. And then we'll just return data. So now to actually pass this params.productID into this uh, function here and return it back to the page.svelte file, we can say return product, fetch product, and then we'll pass params.productID. And then now inside of our page.svelte, we can actually access that by inside of some script tags saying export let data. And then if we console log data here, Inside of our browser, if we check the console, we can see we have an object with a product, has the brand, the category, the title, all that information that the API gave, gave to us, right? And we can now use that to populate our page. So let's first destructure here and take product out of data. And then we'll just fill in the blanks here. So product.title, product.description, and then product.price. And we're gonna say two fixed, whoops two fixed so we can add a decimal point and two uh, decimal places afterwards just to make it look more like a price here. So now you can see that we see iPhone 9, the description and the price. So if we change this one to 50, for example, we're going to get women's shoes, right? So that's, that's how route parameters work. Now let's go back and link the um, titles here on our shop page to actually bring us to that specific page when we click on them. We could do that pretty simply by going into the page that's felt for the shop. And as you can see here, we already have access to whatever product we're rendering right here. So we can use the ID of that product inside of an href of an A tag to link to that page. So let's just create a new A tag here. We'll say slash shop slash product dot ID. Then we'll move the title inside of that A tag. Now when we save, we click on iPhone 9, for example, we get the iPhone 9. If we click on the MacBook Pro, we get the MacBook Pro. So very simple. We can also add data SvelteKit prefetch here, which will have SvelteKit go ahead and fetch that data as we hover over that link. So we can just hover over the Samsung Universe 9, and you can see that 3 was fetched behind the scenes. We click on it, it instantly loads. And these route parameters can also be nested. So you can nest these, I believe, as far as you'd like. I'm not sure if they have a limit to it. I haven't let me see here, it doesn't say they have a limit, but you can keep nesting them. So then you would have multiple parameters. So by the end of that, whatever that last plus page.js is, you would have all the parameters that came before that as well. So you can access, you know, users slash tweets, for example, slash the ID of the tweet, right? The tweet ID. So that's really how route parameters work. And that is going to conclude this video where we went over what route parameters are and how to use them in SvelteKit. If you found this video informative, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would leave a thumbs up and subscribe for even more SvelteKit content. I have a few more videos planned out at least. Um, also, feel free to request any specific content you'd like to see in the comments below. I'll definitely take them into consideration. And of course, if you have any questions or just like to chat with me, I have a Discord that I will leave a link to in the video description. So feel free to join and ask any questions you may have. And as always, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.